to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast with you Tuesday, October 20th. It's a waiver show. We got a couple of Monday night games to react to. And some breaking news that just came across the wire. Indeed. Uh, I think we're all flabbergasted. By the news? Yeah. Uh, Yeah, uh, Yeah, a little bit. Look, I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. I think we all are. So we received news moments before our fine producer, Judge Giamatti, hit record that uh, the Miami Dolphins have decided that it is two a time. They're going to take this win streak and channel it into a quarterback change. (laughs) They saw what the Bears did. They're like, oh, yeah, we, we uh, we should do that, too. Well, you have to Tua. keep Tua, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you you have to keep in mind when you're on back to back, you know, victories with six touchdowns in two weeks. That's when you say, "Hold up, wait a minute. Wait, wait. <laughs> I need to change quarterback from this guy who's been lighting it up and put in the rookie because the future. I don't know. I mean, I get it. You've got a bye week. I get it. He's the future. You're going to make a switch someday. So this is the time if you want to do it this year. This is the the time on your schedule that allows you to pivot without um, a, a tragic mistake and collapse of Fitzpatrick causing it. So I, I get it. And it's it's uh, welcome to the NFL introducing Aaron Donald. He has to play the Rams. So Tua, what are you doing? Tua is uh, Mike. Let me make the case for the switch. Two for two. Hundred percent completion Tua for percentage. Tua? On the year, nine yards so far for Tua. So it's just shocking. It's surprising. And what it does for fantasy players is the number one thing you lean on is predictability. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's an ability to say whatever happened to it. You can de- <laughs> right, and uh, that's what we'll be saying. The paper boy. That is the second time. <laughs> just to let the folk know, that's the second time today that that song has been <laughs> referenced. Had Incredible. To, had to bring it back. We're bringing you something very special here. Mm-hmm. So, Devontae Parker, dealing with the injury, gets the bye. Now it's Tua. Miles Gaskin, workhorse, running back, pass catching from Fitzpatrick. What are Tua's tendencies when it comes to throwing the ball to the running back position? So, uh, it it is just, um, it's interesting because they're on a win streak. They're winning games, and they're playing pretty good football compared to where we thought they'd be. Apparently too well. And the, the, the real saddest part about this uh, I, I would you know very close to my sadness for Devonte Parker and the known uh, you know it's not to say he's bad and can't be started with Tua but you don't know and I presume it will be a negative for Parker but the biggest sadness for fantasy is Ryan Fitzpatrick yeah you, I mean you had a little uh, cheat code there because nobody ever wanted to play him he's on everybody's waivers he's a top 12 quarterback Every single week outside of week one, I guess he finished at thirteen yeah. this past week. That's well, fine. Yeah, That's we'll fine. fudge the numbers there a little. Um, <laughs> but the reality was he was good for fantasy, and now uh, he's I mean, disappeared. I'm, Eraser. Yeah, that yeah, stinks. So uh, that was some breaking news. What was the reaction to these games last night? We had the the Chiefs taking on the Bills in a just a rainy mess. This, this was the most rushing attempts in the history of Andy Reid. So 46 rushing attempts, 26 to Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Considering that every single time Clyde Edwards-Alaire, seemingly, he was ripping off a seven-yard run, I do not blame them. Yeah, and it was rainy. Josh Allen only passed for 122 yards. A lot of that came at the very end of the game. Uh, Stephon Diggs scored. Yeah, he- I couldn't help but be furious with him with his complete – Lack of care to get lined up. At got, the end of the game? It was unbelievable. That's the kind of play that makes me go. Like if This is why Mike Zimmer and Stephon Diggs were right. not compatible players or uh, coach player because he just casual walks back, gets a penalty. 
I, can't, I thought it was pathetic. I can't imagine that Sean McDermott, uh, Too head, pleased. head coach of Buffalo, had some some kind words for him after that play. But uh, he, here's another headline from the game. McCall Hardman was not involved despite there being no Sammy Watkins for the second week in a row. He had exactly zero receptions Oof. while Demarcus Robinson led the team with five for 69. And so McCall Hardman at this point, it seems like as a flyer, not worthwhile. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, he was my unfortunate take it up to a hundred player because he only needs one touch. Um, but I mean, this is this is also what we said is in the cards. It, you 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 hope for opportunity to allow him to have a big play, but also he could very easily goose. And we did not know. I it was it was definitely shocking to me because um, I hadn't heard anything before putting the game on of weather conditions, and then. It was a super rainy game. Yeah, and so uh, the Chiefs came out on top, kind of throw some of the passing game out the window. Mahomes still ended up with two touchdowns. Josh Allen's had a couple of down weeks, but again, it was rainy, and uh, he still gets it done a little bit on the ground. And the Bills running back uh, committee is back to you don't want to play either of those players. No, no, this is a real garbage situation <laughs> in Buffalo. <laughs> All right, oh. the uh, the Cardinal game, however, we can just skip this one, right? We have a lot of <laughs> we have a lot of waivers to get to. No, so. we're not skipping this one, Brooks. Oh, okay. His Cowboys are sad. Uh, so greatest nine completion performance in the history of the NFL for Kyler Murray. We talk about the accuracy. Oh. It's not a taught thing, you know. You hear Troy Aikman talk about it, or, or that's been the consensus. You can't teach accuracy, right? Mm -hmm. Kyler's been a player that through his entire high school, collegiate, NFL, this is a player who's an accurate quarterback. Mm -hmm. Josh Allen, inaccurate. Josh Allen's turned it around this year. And here's Kyler, 9 for 24. Kyler's turned it around. <laughs> missing some really <laughs> easy plays. I mean, just wide open receivers. He missed Larry on a touchdown. He, uh, he threw the ball for 37% completion. Yeah, and yet. In a dominant victory. One, and he made big plays, and that's nice to see both for the Cardinals and for fantasy because he had a great fantasy game. He he was dynamic on the ground once again. 10 carries, 74 yards. I mean, that says it all. He's running more than Lamar's running this year. And then uh, one big play to Hopkins saved his day. Christian Kirk. Uh, they tried to get Isabella on some deep plays, but the fact that they're going downfield on those plays, you can get the type of Russell Wilson production from Kyler in the passing game. Um, thoughts on Kenyon Drake, superstar? Yeah, I mean, Kenyon Drake this morning becomes a joke, a punchline for every league out there because he's a player that's been frustrating, but he's still started. He's had, you know, almost every league that I've seen, I, I can't imagine that you benched Kenyon Drake. He's getting too much volume. You're just angry at him, which means in every single league, there was some matchup that had a super late, crazy change on the 69-yard touchdown run, which was completely unnecessary i mean he could have gone down at the one right and the game would have been over instead the, they had no, to go he, through the whole spiel he and, took it to the house thank you and Kenyon. i saw several i mean he has been tweeting a lot about fantasy football and fantasy football players would have lost their minds had he done the the old brian westbrook go down and end the game the right i mean probably the right thing for the team but i saw so many screenshots of it, it would i it blew my mind of people winning by f a fraction of a point because they needed a 69-yard touchdown run at the end of a game when a, when a team is simply killing the clock. It, I could not believe how many matchups swung and it, by it is, just by just a a hair. It is the dream scenario for a fantasy player where they're sitting there and the game is in hand and people are basically congratulating one another. And then you're like, oh, yeah, I need like a 70 yarder right. from Drake here to win this matchup. And whoa, I mean, how many people turned the game off, went to bed, the game was over. They were just going to kneel it out oh, or that's, whatever. That's get the not how you want to wake up. But uh, yeah, it was crazy. If you take that out, if you, if you remove that, I, you know, he was 19 for, uh, 95 yards a carry and a touchdown. This is 95 why, a carry. Yeah, he wow. is. He is a great, great player. That's interesting. 90, <laughs> 90 yards, 
five yards of carry. You so missed the nine, live part. <laughs> it was 19 <laughs> for 90, five yards of carry. Oh, you need to use punctuation. Yeah, there's no speech. verbal comma in there. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's fair. Uh, Brooks, why don't you break the Cowboys down for us? I don't have any appropriate sound effects. Just Here's yep. one. Oh, the garbage man can. That's your uh, Amari Cooper alert there. Amari Cooper got it done, 7 for 79 and a touchdown late. Uh, this was not what you wanted to see in any way, shape, or form. I know a lot will be made of the Elliott turnovers, whatever. I mean, I don't think he's fumbled twice in a game ever. This was like the first time. And then the headline here is Dalton. I mean, mm -hmm. Dalton was... He was bad. This was backup Andy Dalton. Yeah, he, And he, starter Andy Dalton wasn't very special. So He, he was bad, but this is... Uh, I will pump the brakes here for... Anyone, if you got Amari Cooper, if you got Lamb, Schultz, take a take a breath. You you got to take that that uh that whooping and just accept it and move on. If you have like Michael Gallup, I wanted to hold on to him for one more week. You could probably move on from Michael Gallup, but the other guys, this was Andy Dalton's first start of the year. He hasn't really had the time with the starters, so I I'm actually going to give Andy Dalton a little bit of a pass here. And say I expect him to be better moving it, forward. That's it's, his his go to move. A little bit of a pass. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. Um, it. It's also, I mean, we 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 speak tongue in cheek. We do that with uh, Captain Kirk as well. Right. But that is not as true as Andy Dalton in prime time. Andy Dalton's history in prime time has always been terrible. Um, has Dalton ever played Cousins on prime time? Oh man. The, the what NFL would wouldn't what be, would happen? NFL would be over. Hey, Cousins showed up in primetime, didn't oh, he? Oh, yeah. No, statistically, he, he's lost a lot in primetime, yeah. but fantasy-wise, he's actually been good in primetime. Dalton has always stunk in primetime games. The, people thought they could stream Andy Dalton. I don't advise it. Andy Dalton, regardless of how bad this defense is, the garbage time possibilities, he's going to turn the ball over, and it's going to be ugly. He's going to get sacked, and he's going to fumble, and he's going to throw ugly interceptions. He had another one in this game that he threw directly to Jordan Hicks. No mm -hmm. one was in the vicinity. Jordan Hicks dropped it inexplicably. The, the turnovers and the downside is going to remove Andy Dalton in almost all circumstances from the streaming consideration for me. There is a massive offensive line problem yes. as well. I mean, they, they lost uh, Zach, Zach Martin, Martin yeah. last night. We have to see what his condition is moving forward, but they're – there's an offensive line problem. Yeah. Yeah, they're already missing one of their other uh two. Yeah. Yeah. And real quick before we move on, I've seen a lot of tweets one a score update for uh, me and Jason's dynasty oh, matchup. Oh, sure was, you have. I just said, yeah. Wow. I got big shimmied. Oh. Brooks. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> you took care of business, Jason. I took care of business. I needed it. I mean, honestly, you played excellent fantasy defense this week yes, in all of your leagues. Yes, I did. I Kelsey came through. Uh, Kyler came through, and Kenyon Drake came through. Like, I mean, other than that, you're probably from the entirety of yeah, the Monday night games for for a lot of big names. Dude, that was probably the yeah, the only one. Oh, I, oh, Edwards Alaire, who keeps getting his his touchdown stolen. Stop, referees! I can't. You wait. owe me so many Edwards. I touchdowns. can't wait for how many touchdowns Lev scores next week, Mike. No, oh, oh, yes. it's never gonna happen. Ah. All right, let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. All right, we'll handle the second half of this news in the waiver section, but Kyle Shanahan said Raheem Mostert, high ankle sprain, likely headed to IR. Mm. Jason's fears were 100% warranted, uh, ironically with the exact same injury as Christian McCaffrey, where he was ruled out immediately, um, and Mostert tried to play on it for a second, came off, ruled out, and now high ankle sprain, likely headed to IR for three weeks. Or more. Miles Sanders not expected to play Thursday night football. Uh, could miss some more time. But not a catastrophic injury for Miles Sanders. They were yeah. saying one to two weeks was the expected timeline. That's great news. But it's it's been frustrating uh, if you've been rostering Miles Sanders. Because he's already missed. And now he's about to miss again. Yeah, he's going to miss. And they, I expect him to miss two games. Which is unfortunate. Because then he would miss the game against the Cowboys. But then there is a bye week. So this is that's where I was saying of the timing of Miles Sanders, expect to have him not playing for you for the next three weeks. Along with Zach Ertz, who's expected to miss three to four weeks. Congratulations. This is helpful because now the decision that you've wanted to make 
has been made for you. Honestly, that's that's one hundred percent true. Oh, it's a mer- it's mercy. It's a mercy. <laughs> okay, let me. Although ask not this. for Zach, I, no, I feel I, bad for Zach, but yeah, for fantasy. But let me it's ask. It's a uh, contract year for him, right? It is. Oh. No, I don't. I don't I think, think oh, no, he, just, he just wants more money. Yeah, right. He's like, I, my skills are going down. I got to get paid <laughs> now. I really need this contract. Um, do you drop him? I mean, assuming obviously, if you have an IR spot, you'd put him there. But let's say you don't. Are you going to hold on to a tight end who was bad beforehand? You drop him. No. Yeah, you no. got to drop him. Uh, John New Smith, minor ankle sprain, expected to be considered questionable for Sunday's game against the Steelers. He may need to go f- to doubtful for your fantasy roster in that matchup. I have heard – quickly to go back to Zach Ertz, I have – you were talking about the money. I have heard the rumors. He is getting a sponsorship with Tide. Because he's washed. Because he is yeah. washed. <laughs> hmm. It took me a second. We had to go back for that. <laughs> yeah. well, I, well, I had it all lined up. I'm sorry. The, the joke gun was ready we to had fire. Kinda, we had talked all about Ertz, and then he's like, I want to get one more punch in. Mm-hmm. Well, Now that he, he's injured, I want to go below the belt here. If, if he's gone for three to four weeks, I can't be making him. Or can I? <laughs> oh, you you will. You will. Think that'll stop me? <laughs> if you're curious whether we play fantasy football and not just talk about it, you just <laughs> got your... Uh, I Look, Zach Ertz, I wish you a speedy recovery. There were rumors about him being traded, uh, including to Arizona. Yeah, yeah. Stop that. So, stop that. I will say this: Dan Arnold has been an unmitigated oh. flop in Arizona. He can't block, nor is he involved in the passing game. He is just kind of running well, around the look, field, he getting is, penalties. He is the postman, and we've heard about all the the cuts to the postal service, That's right? Right. Including I, Dan Arnold, who I'm was laid just off. Afraid, I'm afraid that Mike's going to just keep <laughs> setting up ridiculous jokes the rest of this show <laughs> have you ever listened to our show no actually this is I what i'm here to do i don't subscribe you set them up i knock them down mm-hmm. great i uh, know you set them up and you knock them down mike <laughs> mark ingram has a chance to play in week eight they are on by that'll be interesting for the waiver consideration of what you're doing mm-hmm. because of uh the timeline and that you'd have to hold somebody through the buy that's always sometimes you can get them inexpensively, but something to look at when we talk waivers. I love this report, guys. Panthers head coach Matt Rule says he's not sure if Christian McCaffrey will be back this week, next week, or the week after. Well, here's the thing. That is not helpful. Um, (laughs) And the reality is people read that and said, oh, he, he could be ready this week. If the head coach is saying, I'm not sure if he's ready this week or next week or the next week, he ain't ready. Um, that's how I view it. And similar to looking at the timeline for Miles Sanders, recognizing that he will be gone for the next three games, Christian McCaffrey will at best play one game before week 10 because he's hoping to get back in week eight. I don't expect him this week. And then there's a week nine bye. So you still have to, you know, if, if you have been managing the, the Christian McCaffrey sadness, you've got to look ahead and plan. You don't think there's any chance for this week? I, I don't. I would be shocked, but that would be great. I have him in our league of record, and he would I would go, sure like to play him. He'd go right into your line. 100%. Corey Davis off the COVID list. Sterling Shepard, uh, status for week seven, which is the Thursday game. He might play if the pregame workout goes well. I don't care. Uh, we, Daniel Jones does not provide me confidence on picking any of these wide receivers. Mm-hmm. No, but he could provide help to Daniel Jones if he, he actually had a full, you know, Slayton and Tate and Sterling Shepard. Maybe he wouldn't stink as much. All right. And then, uh, well, let's, I guess we'll break this news. Uh, Adam Gaze, when asked whether he would relinquish play calling duties this week, said that is step 10. And the Jets are currently on step two. Hit him. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> They're on step two, Mike, and that is important to know that we're with, only on step two. Was was step one or step two the hyperdrive? Step one offense? was get rid of Le'Veon Bell to set yourself up for success, Mike. Mm, that's, I didn't know if you knew that. I, I, I was aware. I, I was aware of what Adam Gase was doing. This is just comedic. He's He's a funny guy. He's a funny guy. And by funny, nobody likes him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, the reports from <laughs> beat writers Somebody in New York. Somebody does. 
yes, someone some, does. Somebody likes him or he's got dirt on somebody. I don't know what the deal is, but yeah, most people say he's not the nicest coach to work with. No. Frank Gore and him, though. Can you hypnotize? Yeah. Can you hypnotize people with googly eyes? Is uh, that a thing? I've seen it in movies. Okay. Those and rings and and watches. I don't know. All right. Not a hypnotist. Right. Before we move on to the waivers, want to thank today's sponsor. This episode of the Fantasy Footballers is brought to you by Head and Shoulders, available at Walmart this year. We're doing a segment every Thursday. We're going to be picking up our picking our up to 100 players of the week. While Head and Shoulders has taken your hair up to 100. Whew. We took that segment we, to zero. Look, we took it to 100 the other, the other direction. 100% <laughs> fail. This was the first time that none of the players that we picked actually took it up to 100. Well, to be fair, Jason had Cole Hardman. He took his, uh, his drop rate up to 100. Yeah. It was rainy. On his one target. Antonio Gibson took his backup role <laughs> to 100 because J.D. Aww. McKissick was just out there all the time. And the Washington DST, they they took it to 100 by saying, no, the, the New York Giants were actually the DST. You, you know, when you played. say it out loud that you you made the Washington DST, you were taking it to 100, it sounds ridiculous. That Because it was it was risky business. Well, yeah. You just the, talked about Daniel Jones. That's the whole point of this segment is we're trying to get people that are not easy, <laughs> people you're not starting, that are going to take it up to 100, and that's... Try uh, harder. Yeah, we, we will. will. We will pick up the pieces. Our players this week will take it up to 100. Take your hair up to 100 with head and shoulders available at Walmart. Pick yours up today and check out this Thursday's episode to hear our up to 100 picks of the week. That will surely be better. <laughs> All right, and we want to thank Lightstream for supporting today's podcast as well. If you're like most people, you have a balance on your credit cards and a higher rate of interest than you would prefer... Uh, you can turn those balances into a one-time, or not one-time, a one-monthly payment at a lower fixed rate and start saving some money. Lightstream offers credit card consolidation loans from 5.95% APR with auto pay and excellent credit. The rate is fixed, so it will never go up over the life of the loan. Our listeners can save even more with an additional interest rate discount. The only way to get this discount is to go to lightstream.com slash footballers. That's L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash footballers. Subject to credit approval. Rate includes 0.5% auto pay discount. The lowest rate requires excellent credit and terms and conditions apply. And offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash footballers for more information. Put me in, coach. You don't I guess you have to pick up two, huh? Wrong. Party ruiners. Yeah, this is a little different for Fitzpatrick. Normally, he goes Hindenburg and then is replaced. Right. Right? Yeah, Maybe this was a blessing. They're, they're like, we, don't, we know it's coming. We're just going to sit you beforehand. You can leave on a high note. Interesting. Very interesting. I mean... I will say this. This is all pro Fitzpatrick, not anti Tua. Like, Tua could be, I mean, we've seen Joe Burrow, rookie, uh, making progress, uh, Mike's favorite man. The, Justin Herbert. Justin oh, Herb, Herbert. Herbs. 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 Big, big herbs. <laughs> big herbs. Uh, been great. So maybe Tua, th my first thought was, is he just dominating in practice? Are they looking at that Aaron Donald matchup and saying, we need somebody that can escape the pocket? I don't know. You can know who can escape the pocket. Yeah, it fits magic, and he could he could take a hit. He's putting it all in like the problem is, I want to like Tua, and this move here it makes I, it tough. I blame Tua. It's your fault. Yeah, I I heard Aaron Donald was actually a little bit afraid of being hit by Ryan Fitzpatrick. The people are. Yeah. All right, we're he's, looking. He's thick. <laughs> that is not thick Patrick. That is very true. Thick Patrick. Thick Patrick. Ryan, Patrick that's what nah, they call. Him. Okay. Uh, we are. No, Mike. Mike's had. Some, Mike's having a special. He's had show. some morning. I love it. Uh, whiskey or something. <laughs> he's got the morning brew going. Um, <laughs> returning from the bye week, we get the Raiders, Saints, Seahawks, and Chargers back, and the Colts, Dolphins, Vikings, 
and Ravens are heading to buy. We are in the waivers. We are in the wide receiver position. Top drop candidates from Twitter, Instagram. Players want to know. Michael Gallup, can you let him go? Yeah, yes. I'm, I'm fine with that one. Juju or Deontay Johnson? If you had to make a decision, I think you it, know my answer. It, I would be dropping Juju. If you're going to drop Deontay Johnson, please drop him right onto my roster. If, yeah, Deontay. Please. It, I, I know some people out there are a little confused because Deontay hasn't done much on the season. Deontay is even the little he's done has shown me like if he was out there, I would 1 million percent be picking him up. He has had injuries that have kept him off the field. And while he's been on the field, he's been the first target in a good offense. Juju is someone that I don't necessarily you don't need him. And you don't need to roster him. We talked about this. You trade him. You try your you, best. You, yeah. You package trade him to open up a roster spot and upgrade somewhere else because he's got a big name. Someone will take a shot on him. Let me expand the Juju conversation for a moment, though, because we're talking redraft context. There are a lot of question marks. Juju was one of the most uh, highly sought after wide receivers in Dynasty Leagues just starting last year. Mm -hmm. He still has the name. He still has the history. He will not probably be on this team. Are you actively shopping Juju in a dynasty context? Yeah, I mean, I, I, we, we know from history that generally speaking, when wide receivers change teams, and this is certainly not just a, a, a universally true statement, but it's, it doesn't usually work out as a great boon to their fantasy success. Um, based on what he's doing now, I don't know that he's going to go out and get that monstrous contract that says he is – you know, going to get the ball 130 times thrown his way. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think I would be willing to shop him. His future is I, – I think that the likelihood that his future is bad is high enough compared with the fact that uh, the, you know, the potential is still there in a trade. All right, Hollywood Brown? No, I'm no, not dropping uh, no him. Way. Jerry Judy? Nope, I would no. not drop him either. All right, well uh, – We'll bring those names up again with some of these players. But the main waiver wire pickups this week to look at. Let's not forget about Mike Williams and what he did. They were on by. I agree. And uh, as he often does, he looked absolutely dominant and always hurt after he caught the ball. But he's not hurt. And Mike Williams got a week off. Gets to come out here against uh, and, and maybe give your fantasy team a boost. He was five for one nine and two, and Justin Herbert has been outstanding and willing to take deep shots, which is not something you see with every – like, I'm not expecting that from Tua necessarily. Right. So, uh, Mike Williams, is he at near the top of your list? I, if Mike Williams, of all the names I'm looking through that we are going to bring up, if somehow he was there, he would be my top priority. Mine as well. Okay, so over a player like T. Higgins, who yeah. snap counts, targets going up, over a Travis Fulgham, who has some, you know, Thursday night Fulgham about to happen – Still Mike Williams. Yeah, yes. it would it would be Mike Williams. He he has the pedigree, the history, and now a quarterback that is not just willing to take a deep shot, but can throw a good deep ball. Uh, Tyrod, you know, threw a couple deep shots to Mike Williams earlier in the season, and they were irrelevant throws, um, completely uncatchable. So I, I really do like Mike Williams' upside. I like his health. I like his matchup. He'd, he'd be my number one. Okay, I, I would probably slightly lean the Higgins side. I, I was impressed with Higgins in this game. It seems like Burrow and him are building a connection. And the history of injury with Mike Williams, I'm worried that the uh, the cost may betray my team at some point. Because of the 20-foot falls that he takes? He every... does take 20-foot falls. Yeah, I mean, you, you fall from that height and don't yeah. get injured. Yeah, that's really not on him. He really should stop jumping so high. <laughs> He's an uh, he's a hundred percent. He takes it to one hundred. Yes, on every in terms catch. of effort on every catch. Now for T Higgins, are you not concerned about the reemergence of superstar AJ Green? Well, there's no. been a change, and I think a change for the better um, in Cincinnati. Uh, Rich Rebar tweeted out um, the top downfield receivers who have had passes of more than fifteen yards down the field, and all of these guys were hundreds of yards and and multi-touchdowns on those targets, and then here was A.J. Green, one for nine, and he's leading the league in downfield targets. Well, they changed it this week, and I would expect this change to stick because A.J. Green has sucked down the field. He's been 
I mean, there's just no other way to say it. Sure, but he was actually some other ways. But go on. He uh, th- some worse ways I could say it if you <laughs> if you want to bring out the thesaurus. Um, but the but the the reality was he was good this last week. AJ Green and, and maybe he needs to make that Larry Fitzgerald change and become a possession receiver, an inside guy, and let T Higgins go deep. So I think the change what you saw last week is actually. A little sticky for for T. Higgins. Well, and, and it's also potentially damaging for Tyler Boyd because if AJ Green is transitioning into the more possession role, that's where Boyd had been great. That's where Boyd could have they could hurt each other. Like Boyd sure. and Green could be not start worthy. Higgins with the higher uh, red zone opportunities, deep plays, and then John Ross is asking for a trade and a fresh start. I don't know if you saw that report this morning. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe just a start. I think he should go with a start. Dang. Yeah, it was it was funny because the report said he's not happy with his current role. Uh, your current role is not playing. So, yeah, that, I don't even know if you fair, can call statement. that a current role. All right, Travis Fulgham has the Giants in Dallas the next two weeks with a beat up, I mean, you know, no Zach Ertz now. Now, uh, Judge Giamatti brought up the fact that Dallas Goddard is eligible to return in week seven. Yes, you, it, it, you should be scooping up Dallas Goddard up off of the waiver wire. Uh, it, immediately. But, but I do but think Fulgham's going to have targets for the next couple weeks. I completely agree. And over the next month, the Giants twice and Dallas. He, they do have the bye week mixed in there for Travis Fulgham, but he is going to be this. He's going to be the guy of uh, even when Alshon is back. I think that Fulgham will still be involved. Jalen Rager will eventually come back, but you gotta you gotta buy time. You gotta buy some wins right now. And Travis Fulgham is incredibly interesting. It would be interesting to put together a full roster of players whose names none of us knew before the season began mm. for fantasy purposes. And Miles Gaskin could play running back, you know, and or, or a lot of fantasy managers didn't yeah. know. Fulgham's that wide receiver. Henry Ruggs, uh, I'm very interested. I think I'm probably the most bullish on Henry Ruggs of our group, and I, I don't know that to be sure. But, you know... He's not going to be a high target player, but he has flashed in every game he's played, and he changes the entire Raiders offense. Uh, in week five, he was two for one eighteen and a touchdown, and then went into the bye week. So, I am very interested in trying to sneak rugs onto my roster. I'm good trying to sneak him onto the bench and and stash him and see what happens. I don't really want to play him in this matchup uh, against Tampa Bay. They have some they have some very good. Uh, corners on Tampa Bay. That's what I thought about Kansas City, and then Ruggs is like, "Yeah, but see how fast I am." Yeah, you cannot. You cannot uh, keep him from breaking free, and it's just a matter of do they connect. Keelan Cole, are you chasing points with him on the waiver wire this week? No, I'm. I'm personally not. I don't want the second fiddle in the Jaguars' offense. Are you cutting McCall Hardman for all of these players? Yes, uh, Higgins, I would rather Williams, have- Fulgham, Ruggs. Yep, I would rather have all of those players over Hartman. Is Tim Patrick a sneaky ad? He's been very good lately. Eight targets, four for 101. Um, back-to-back 100-yard games. I like. It's easy to take Jerry Judy's big name and say, okay, he's the he's the one. He right. doesn't feel like the one right now. I like Tim Patrick because, it's, I mean, I would go hard after Mike Williams, T. Higgins, and Fulgham. Uh, but then after that, if you're just, you know, throwing zero, $1, uh, fab, just trying to see who who you can sneak through. Tim Patrick is one of those guys that if if you miss out on the heavy hitters of the week, you'll probably just get Tim Patrick on your roster for free. Okay, yeah, it's uh it's interesting. He's been pretty good over the last three weeks. Any other wide receivers that you guys want to bring up? The only other name I would I would bring up, and we will talk about more next week. I think it's still too early, and you know your leagues better than we do. Um, but Antonio Brown sure is currently actively serving his eight game suspension, and so I two more games for Brown. Yeah, and then I expect that someone will probably sign him in Week Nine, and he could be active. That's not a guarantee. He currently doesn't have a team, um, but we've seen enough to know that he can walk right in and become a really important, great fantasy asset for a team. So if you want to take a shot, I would wait another week because you. That's still a little bit of time, but it's worth paying attention. All right. I'm I'm just sitting here looking at the last three weeks. uh, Fantasy numbers at wide receiver. Chase Claypool leading the way in points per game over the last three weeks. Mike Williams had the one game 
So we can kind of throw that out. Thielen's been great. Uh, but CD Lamb. CD Lamb is in the top 12. Tim Patrick in the top 12. Will Fuller. CD Lamb is a is a player as well as Amari Cooper that based on last night's bad game that was so public, I would be willing to try to trade for those players if I can get them cheap because I don't think it's going to be as bad as we saw last night. Well, the Lamb rest was of good season. last night, relatively he was, he, speaking. Yeah, yeah, he was okay. I think he had like 70-something yeah, yards and a couple of catches. But the fantasy managers who watch the implosion of the Cowboys might go, yeah. Maybe yeah, I can unload based on what we've seen and try to get something, and they're worried. So I, I, I might kick the tires at least. That's a good point. I was actively covering my eyes every time Dallas had the ball, so I didn't see anything. All right, the running back position. Oh, it gets desperate at running back. I know this because the fantasy hitman over there, he's uh, he's rocking the Dalvin Cook Miles Sanders combination. Oh, it's yeah, it, the Foot Clan. It's a Kurt. non non combination. Oh, that's a that's a bad joke. Yeah, so can, can somebody hit that non, up? Non I don't know. I was Mike's really setting me up to try to shoot for the stars <laughs> in this one. <laughs> Look, you don't stand too close to the fire. Oh you, man, you don't get your own fire. Oh, gosh. You get burnt. Uh, yeah, currently <laughs> I am uh, slated to start D. Ernest Johnson and Lamichael P. Ryan. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> so no running backs. That's that's my situation in our league of records. So why don't you talk about some of the waiver wire pickups? Because there are all right. There are always two categories of running back. There is the looking towards the future, the sustained longer term value, where someone might you know if Justin Jackson's still out there, who longer term value? If Zach Moss is out there, don't worry about it. Probably not. Uh, but Josh Kelly. But then there's like the quick pickup potential like what does what do the 49ers do at running back this week what is what if what does philadelphia do on thursday night football in a nice matchup where are you looking for help mike because you need it yeah so probably rostered but you should check because Jarek mckinnon is currently rostered in 67 percent of yahoo leagues that means that after uh, he did nothing and moster had the big game last week some people did drop him make sure he is not on the waiver wire because if he was, Jarek McKinnon is easily the number one ad uh, of the week. But I get it. He's not on my waiver wire. So let's look a little bit deeper here. I would say Swift is above McKinnon if they're oh, both I, out no, there. No I way. I would not. What, what do you mean no way? I, I Are you would doubling not. down on McKinnon again? Well, I mean, McKin Mc I know McKinnon had a, uh, you know, the last two weeks they've been bad, but his first four weeks were excellent, and now the starter... I could not disagree with you guys more on the guaranteed pickup. He's playing New England this week. Jeff Wilson could be active again. Jamichael Hasty got worked in because McKinnon was not successful. We've, we've leaned into McKinnon. I just don't have the demonstrative must-start mentality with McKinnon Weeks. in this match. The last two games before Mostert came back, it was 18 carries, 22 carries. Mostert comes back, and all of a sudden... Opportunities. Uh, yes, opportunities, carries and, and, and targets. Once Mostert came back, you know, five and nine total opportunities, he, he wasn't really involved, but it's going to be him again, and so I, I am on the McKinnon side. Yeah, I mean, Mostert missed most of that game, and they moved on to Jermichael Hasty for a reason, so... Uh, I would not be I would not be leaning heavily. I'd much rather have DeAndre Swift. What I've seen from DeAndre Swift has long term value. He plays Atlanta this week. He had tons of opportunities in this game. If I had to choose between the two, I would spend up on Swift for uh, I the would, long term value. I would spend on both guys. And I, and this is not an anti Swift take. I I do think Swift has more long term value. I think you'll get about a month out of McKinnon. That's the kind of timetable I'm I'm giving Mostert. Whereas Swift, they came out of their buy. We talked about it yesterday. And once they came out of the buy, they gave him 14 carries, uh, four targets, and he was really involved. So this could be a rest of season thing. And if you just talk, hey, both those guys, who's more talented? It's clearly the young gun in DeAndre Swift, who looks excellent, is a good pass catcher. So I'm I'm fine with either player. I do think over the next month. McKinnon is more fantasy relevant. It's hard for me to trust a Lions run game over the Kyle Shanahan 49ers run game. That's really the tiebreaker for me. Would you drop? Uh, I didn't get into the drop candidates at running back, but as we talk about these players, if you're going to pounce, if you're going to try to get a running back into your lineup, mm -hmm. are you willing to say goodbye to Alexander Madison at this point? If you are not the Dalvin Cook manager, is this a hold that hurts? It is definitely a hold that hurts. If you don't have Dalvin Cook uh, 
and you have to manufacture a win, then I, yeah, you can drop him. But you, before you drop Alexander Madison, you should at least be talking to the person who manages Dalvin Cook and seeing if you can trade him over there for for anything, really. Agreed. Uh, Mark Ingram. You this can, is the hardest name. Uh, when we when we were talking about him with the injury, I was like, man, do you hold on to Mark Ingram? Because one, he's stunk for the most part in mm -hmm. general. Two, he's injured. Three, he's on by. I have a I have a plan for Ingram. Oh, please tell you me. You want to know I, what the plan is? I need to know. The plan for Mark Ingram is to drop Mark Ingram on Sunday morning for whoever for to pick somebody up. And then let Ingram get mixed with all the waiver wire pickups for the next week that go through on Tuesday. If you want to try to use that roster spot this week, that's what I would do. Because I think Ingram belongs on a roster, but I would like to try to use that spot and not have to hold them through the bye. So that would be my strategy. Try to... What if you need that spot on earlier? waiver night? What if you need it tonight? Well, then I'm willing to let him go. Yeah, I'm willing I to let... Especially if there's a high value. Jo Justin Jackson... Jarek McKinnon, DeAndre Swift. That you guys brought up DeAndre Swift. Uh, those players, I'm all willing to drop Mark Ingram for because what's your opponent going to do when they pounce on Mark Ingram? Hold him through the bye, and then maybe he's not back after the bye, and then hopefully play him against you. <laughs> That's like right. It's it's not a great situation. And then uh, Antonio Gibson. No, you do not drop Gibson. What if you needed? If Gibson were in this Swift. waiver wire. Group, I don't think you'd try to. I would pick someone else. I, I I would pick up Gibson for sure. Yeah, you're you're not dropping Gibson. And if you say okay, maybe there's someone you like more. Maybe you do like DeAndre Swift's outlook more. Then find your worst wide receiver and drop him and carry both of those. Yes, backs. I completely agree. You don't drop Gibson. Cam Akers though, you can let him go. Yeah, you don't need to uh, to hold him and hope for injury at this point uh, in that backfield. He can. Be a speculative roster ad, you know. But if he if he were on this waiver, he'd be like the eighth guy. It's really hard because when you know Mike and I, when Daryl Henderson was coming out, the Memphis tape, loved Daryl Henderson. Yeah. When Cam Akers came out, I loved the tape. I have seen now through this you know small amount of Cam Akers time and then the Daryl Henderson time, Henderson has not, or I'm sorry, Akers has not flashed. We have not seen a big Cam Akers play that makes me think he's going to usurp. A productive Henderson. Agreed. Yeah. So the other. I feel like Justin Jackson should have been very heavily mentioned. Like, do you well, do yeah, you we, sign Jackson over Swift and McKinnon? The uh, no, I I do not. But I would put I would put Justin Jackson third on this list. I mean, we spent most of the time on Swift and McKinnon. But so here are like the meaty guys. Justin Jackson is still available in more than half of Yahoo leagues. I would prefer him at this point. I'm. It's only a one game sample size. But uh, of uh, usage of Justin Jackson more than Joshua Kelly, we've also seen now multiple games of Joshua Kelly looking like those first games were more of a mirage than they were. This is the player that Kelly is going to become. So I I like Justin Jackson a lot, especially he's involved in the the passing game. And then Boston Scott, what do you do with the backup running back for the Philadelphia Eagles? He was disappointing in Week One. With no but, Miles Sanders. With no Miles Sanders, but the volume should be there between Boston Scott and Corey Clement. The matchup against the Giants is not scary at all. Uh, it's so hard. Would I don't you rather know. have Justin Jackson as a spot start for the next uh, couple weeks, or would you oh, have Boston bias Scott? so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, to say a country mile yeah. is disrespectful to how big countries are because <laughs> um, the the reality is like Justin that. Jackson is, is really good. Boston Scott has been – terrible this year I mean he's just every single week he can't run for more than three yards a carry and that's on his good days if uh, Justin Jackson and DeAndre Swift are both like it's hard for me to decide who's the number one between those two oh, on a okay. pickup so it's between Jackson and Swift um Jackson has a great matchup this week in terms of uh you know what we saw last week Mike mentioned it opportunities snap counts heavily in Jackson's favor mm -hmm. Uh, but Boston Scott, Jason, what do you do if you need a start this week? Are you just looking elsewhere? Are you trying the Thursday night start for Boston Scott? What if you're, you know, LaMichael P. Ryan over here? Oh, sure. I, I mean, I would, I would play Boston Scott over LaMichael P. P. Ryan for sure because I, I think that 
The targets can be there. He's an excellent pass catcher that could be utilized. The matchup is fine, and the volume will be there. I, I'm just not expecting a good thing, but I'm I'm expecting a bad thing from Michael <laughs> P. Ryan. So if, You're not expecting a good thing, right? Uh, but you are expecting a bad thing. Yeah, different players. So, yeah, I mean, I would uh, – I don't even know. Michael P. Ryan, if there was a different coach, I might say Ty Johnson is more involved in that backfield. He was the only guy that looked like he had juice – but it'll, it'll probably but, just be – he doesn't like guys with juice. Well, <laughs> that's true. That's Adam Gase's motto. Uh, but speaking of the Michael P. Ryan, he is worth a pickup. I would prefer that I'm not. Uh, I mean, he's at the back of these guys. He's, I would prefer to have these other players. But he is worth the pickup. 56% uh, of the snaps for the Michael P. Ryan. He saw seven carries, three targets. Yes, Gore uh, out-touched him, uh, it, but – I think that P. Ryan is worth a stash as this team is moving forward. I'd rather be dead. <laughs> that's that's fine. I'd rather be dead than stash a speculative Jets. Where do you weigh in on the P. Ryan acquisition? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm walking off the plank. Uh, so, I, Adrian Peterson. That's, yes. That's a player I would, I would much. If you're going to have someone that doesn't have juice, well, no, I mean, Adrian Peterson has looked fine. He's been good. He got 15 carries last week. He had a touchdown. We're talking about DeAndre Swift, like they came out of the bye and made him the guy. They didn't. He was far more involved, but that was because they were up and able to run the ball. I mean, both of those guys were, were involved. So, um, you know, that Adrian Peterson would be, in your situation, a guy I would be looking for. If you have to start someone this week against Atlanta, you could do worse. All right, and then uh... – other potential options. I mean, J.D. McKissick has been just between six and eight targets for four straight weeks. Yeah, you can play him. You could probably do worse than that. And then uh, against Dallas yeah. th this upcoming week, uh, Andy Dalton will be better against Washington than he was against Arizona. And McKissick's going to be on the field a lot. Dallas's defense made Kenyon Drake look good. Oh, yeah. Tough to do. Well, Carolina in, couldn't in, do that. Yeah, in fairness, Drake is great. Um <laughs> So let's let's talk about um, Jarek McKinnon's backfield mates because there's going to be some speculation as mm -hmm. to, you know, McKinnon hasn't looked great the last two weeks. I'll, I'll give Andy that. Um, Jermichael Hasty, or, you know, he looked really explosive in his few carries. And so a lot of people are going to be running the waiver wire wanting to add him. Now, we need to keep in mind, Jeff Wilson was inactive. And Jamichael Hasty was active. He's a special teamer. So when Mostert went down, Jamichael Hasty was involved. Now he's fast, and he he was a, a drumbeat in camp uh, in the early camp days. Everybody was talking about Jamichael Hasty. Um, so he could be the pickup. But if Jeff Wilson gets over his current injury, then if Jeff Wilson is active, I would expect Jamichael Hasty to not be all that involved. Where do you stand on taking that secondary shot? Would you go Jermichael Hasty or would you go Jeff Wilson? Neither, both. Uh, there's no way that they'll give McKinnon all the work. And so if yeah, I would add Jermichael Hasty as a as a sneak him onto the bench, and if they declare Jeff Wilson out, I think you can spot start Jermichael Hasty. I think he will get enough work in that situation, assuming they don't activate Tevin Coleman or anybody else. If it's just Hasty and McKinnon, on how do you not lean into uh, mm -hmm. the yeah. opportunity? And on waiver day more people will be going after Jermichael Hasty. I don't think people are going to be going after Jeff Wilson because he was inactive last week, which means if later in the week you hear that Jeff Wilson is practicing in full and he is probably going to be active, you might then make that pivot and drop Jermichael Hasty to pick up, uh, pick up My Name is Jeff and, at the end of the week. And I would say that if you are a winning team and you have the spot, you can pick up Tevin Coleman. He should be returning from his injury sooner than later. That's a good point. And you, you can't play him this week, obviously. We, we don't expect him. But Mostert on IR with a high ankle sprain. Who knows when Mostert's going to be healthy again this year. Uh, Coleman should be stashed. That's not official yet, right? It, no. It, Raheem it, Mostert the, is not officially no, on the, the IR. Move, the move has not officially been made, the transaction, but it's going to happen. Uh, I'm seeing more reports on the Tua situation that uh, it seems, at least according to Adam Schefter, that it was like, this is just the plan. Like, no matter what happened. Like, they were like, Tua's going to be our starter after the bye, regardless of what happens on the field because of how abrupt this. That is so bizarre. I mean, I, I get, uh, it's great to have a they plan. They had a plan. It's good. You got a, I, I, I've got a plan. Uh, but did your plan, in your plan, when you're like, the best outcome 
of this team, you know, really being honest, assessing your team. At the bye week, what percentage chance did you give yourself of being 500 in the divisional race? You know what? I'm coming around on Ahead of the Patriots. I'm coming around on the move. Because Ryan Fitzpatrick's on a one year, right? Yeah. Who do you want who do you want mentoring Tua during his I mean he, he's going to be the future. And you're probably not winning a Super Bowl. So do you want Ryan Fitzpatrick alongside Tua for the second half of the year? I I Do you see what I'm saying? I see what you're saying, and I like what you're saying. And the reality is it's not best for the Dolphins this week. It's okay. not. Yeah, that's fair. But it is potentially the best thing that the Dolphins could do for their franchise and so I get that yeah I, I, I like both your points because you know to to Mike's side you're 500 and the only teams you've lost to are the Patriots the Bills and the Seahawks every most teams are losing to those guys yeah dang the, the Dolphins have scored more points than the Bills and they have allowed 50 fewer points than the Bills like they're a good the, team. The Dolphins are in the mix. And they're only a game behind the Bills, right? Yeah, I mean, the, right now the Bills would have the tiebreaker. So, wow. But the the Bills are 4-2 and two, the Dolphins are 3-3, three and three, and you're making the switch. It's, I'm back on Mike's side. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't now, know. Now, there is it's the possibility wild. that they win with Tua because they're a good team. Sure, it, it it's possible, but... It will be fun to watch. It won't yeah. be as fun to be a Devontae Parker fantasy manager. No, or, it will not. All right, tight ends, waiver wire pickups. Oh, it's so difficult. And but, I here's what I want to preface. I don't want us to fall into the trap in this discussion of all tight ends are murky and ugly and we don't give any good advice because they're all a crapshoot. Sure. And we're just discouraged with Evan Ingram and Mike Kosicki, so throw your hands up if you don't have Travis Kelsey. So is there a real prescription here for the tight end? Can we fix this problem? Is there somebody that you can pick up with confidence and start this week? Is Darren Fells cemented as a start right now with what Deshaun Watson's doing? I, I think Darren Fells is is a, a matchup based player this week against Green Bay. I think you could play him. So yeah, you can pick up uh, him and start him. I think you can do the same with Jimmy Graham, pa, because he gets enough targets and he gets enough targets around the end zone. You're not going to be happy with players of this caliber week in and week out, but you want the tight ends that have a history of getting a touchdown. That's what you're looking for on the waiver wire. That's Darren Fells. That's Jimmy Graham. And I uh, boo boo. Yeah. I mean, my guy, Trey, Trey Burton. Burton, but Trey Burton's not playing next week. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, Dallas Goddard is clearly my number one tight end pickup of these players if he's available if you have an IR someone probably put him on the IR and just stashed him but Darren Fells is in play if Akins is out Dalton Schultz he he was still involved he still has the six most receiving yards among tight ends he it, like we, I actually like Dalton Schultz because of 11 targets to uh, Ezekiel Elliott in that game to accompany the four receptions I'm saying I Dalton Schultz, we we didn't know what was going to happen with Andy Dalton. It was a, a wait, let's see, and it's Dalton Schultz is still in play. And yeah, should be rostered. Yeah, I think that that is. Uh, I think that's helpful. Now, do you let go of Gasicki for any of those guys? Uh, <laughs> if I knew that Dallas Goddard was gonna, active this week, play. he is eligible to play this week. That doesn't right. mean he's going to play this week. It just means he can come off IR. I don't it's Thursday too. I don't have a recent enough health update. But, I mean, that, that's what you're going to want to pay attention to today, the news that comes out. Because if he were active, I mean, you're talking about a guy who could be, should be, a top five tight end through the next month, and you should pay up for him. But he might not play, and it's really hard. Trust me, as someone who keeps picking up Jared Cook it's to hard. not play him and waste my fab dollars, it's been... Uh, and Goddard's kind of like he's had a few opportunities without Ertz that he hasn't taken advantage of to the degree that we expected. I wonder why that is. All right, defensive streaming options. You want to pick somebody up? You got the Chiefs defense against Drew Locke and Denver this week that you can look at. You've got the Saints against Carolina. Carolina slowed down last week. That's an interesting matchup. Browns get Cincinnati. You know that they're going to be able to put pressure on the quarterback with Miles Garrett. And then, uh, yeah. Do you 
play the Dallas Cowboys defense against Washington. I was building some DraftKings lineups, and the price for Dallas was so cheap. It was like this matchup, Kyle Allen. The answer should be no. What about the Eagles against the Giants? I think that that's okay. That's yes. the, that one's all right. Yeah, yeah. that okay. one is good. They've got a, such a good defensive line still, um, and the Giants they've they've had some holes, especially on the left side of that line, that they'll get some sacks. So I, I think the pick Eagles up are, the Bills and say so make sure you take a, just a look. Yeah, I get it. The Bills are probably rostered, but they did play Kansas City. That had these defenses, they get dropped, and you're not paying attention. So make sure the but, Bills are not but, there. But they have to play the Jets. <laughs> right. Uh, the, the Jets have actually – they chose not to play. <laughs> they are skipping. You can't get sex when they don't play. It doesn't count as a loss. It counts as a forfeit, and Adam Gaze looks at that as a win. So let's talk quarterbacks. Full stream ahead. All right, streaming quarterback options this week. I'm going Matthew Stafford against Atlanta. All Atlanta knows how to do is give up top 12 quarterback performances. That is true. They have played six games. They have done it six times. They have upped the ante five of those six times by giving up top six performances. Stafford has been soups disappointing so far. Yeah. He only has one top 10 week. But look, we watched the tape last week. Stafford was fine. They had three Goal line carries. I think this is a big game for Galladay. By extension, it's a big game for Stafford and company. I think it's a big game for Hawkinson as well. Matthew Stafford's my stream of the week. My stream of the week is a quarterback that when you watch, you want to close your eyes. He's been sucking. Don't you he, dare close your eyes. He has no weapons. He has no offensive line. He gets sacked a ton. It's I know I'm selling it well. But at the same time, Carson Wentz, has been a top 12 quarterback three of the last four weeks in those conditions. He had now has Travis Fogum, who is kind of – at least he has someone he can go to that can catch the ball right now. And he's just getting it done. The matchup against the Giants is good enough. And if you're picking someone up off of the waiver wire, obviously the, they're on the waiver wire for a reason. They're scary. They're a dicey proposition, but I want the upside. I want someone who can go out there and throw three touchdowns or run two rushing scores in. Carson Wentz absolutely can do that. And he'll You're probably, talking about the QB4 from last week against Baltimore, it, Carson Wentz? Yes, that one. The one where if you watch the first half, you would have said, oh my gosh, I'm going to finish with negative points, and then he got it together. I agree. I will... Uh, he'll miss Miles Sanders out of the backfield. That will be the one thing that will be interesting to see, but maybe he gets Goddard back. I'm going with Justin Herbert, the rookie for the Los Angeles Chargers. Herbs. Big Herbs. B Herb. <laughs> Are we going with Big Herbs? No, we're not going to go there. Herb, Herbsy. TBD uh, on the Herbs. Yeah, we'll figure that one out. Uh, he's been great. It's I get it. He's a rookie, and maybe you don't want to trust the rookie quarterback, but he has weapons. Keenan Allen should be back after uh, exiting two weeks ago early. But here's what Justin Herbert has done in his young career. Uh, in week four, he was on the road against Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, the defense that just completely shut down Hall of Fame quarterback Aaron Rodgers. And Justin Herbs completed 80% of his passes and was the QB7. He then had to go on the road and play against Drew Brees, and he was the QB4. This dude is getting it done. He will sling it. He has Mike Williams who can – has a vertical of 30 feet. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, he has set up for two success. stories, two stories high. Oh, and by the way, he's playing the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah. Like everything is there for Justin Herbert this week. All right. We want to thank pristine auction for supporting the show yesterday. I know a fan signed Broncos Jersey, $47 oh, over there. And, uh, that's pristine auction.com. Hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions. Use the code ballers. You get a $10 credit. We'll be back tomorrow. By the way, Mike, you can't start Herbs unless Prop 207 goes through out here in Arizona. That, that's what I'm hearing. Yeah, so you got to wait to see what the results are there. We'll see you next time, Footland. Stay safe. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.